we are going to uh, solve the economic load dispatch uh, for a total demand of 850 megawatt solve for economic uh, load dispatch of generation for a total demand of 850 megawatt the fuel cost functions are given the fuel cost functions are given below the first uh, fuel cost function is f1 of p1 is equal to 459 plus 6.48 p1 plus 0.00128 p1 square okay the minimum and maximum operating limits are 150 megawatt less than or equal to p1 less than or equal to 600 megawatt next the fuel cost um, uh, fuel cost function f2 of p2 is equal to 310 plus 7.85 p2 plus 0 0.00194 p2 square okay the minimum and maximum operating limits of second generating unit is 100 less than 100 megawatt less than or equal to p2 less than or equal to 400 megawatt next f3 of p3 is equal to 78 plus 7.97 p3 plus 0 0.00482 p3 square the minimum and maximum operating limits is 50 megawatt less than or equal to p3 less than or equal to 200 megawatt okay so this is the problem for the today's class just take down this problem okay so while noting down uh, uh, you have to note down correctly if you miss one zero or after this uh, after the point you miss one zero or one uh, number any one number then your demand uh, uh, will not be satisfying then you will get huge difference in the demand okay after the final answer you get huge difference in the demand you may not be able to satisfy the satisfies the demand okay so while noting down the problem you have to note down very very correctly next what is the general formulation that we derived the general formulation is dfi divided by dpa that is economic load dispatch of n thermal generating units that so we already derived like uh, dfi divided by dpa is equal to lambda so now what we have to do so we have to substitute i is equal to 1 2 3 because three generating units are given okay so we have to substitute i is equal to 1 2 3 that is uh, df1 divided by dp1 then df2 divided by dp2 then df3 divided by dp3 and one another one uh, important thing is that yeah another one important thing is that <coughs> excuse me. so here you are see, seeing the uh, f1 f2 and f3 so in the last problem it, it is like h1 okay heat rate will be given so if heat rate is given the fuel cost also will be given so here the directly fuel rate is uh, being given okay fuel rate is being given so that also you have to very very careful okay sometimes only um, heat rate uh, will be given okay so heat rate is given the automatically fuel cost also will be given so um, fuel rate f1 of p1 is equal to h1 into that fuel cost that particular fuel cost okay so here uh, the um, directly fuel cost functions are being given okay so fuel cost functions are being given so no need to do anything okay so that is uh, because uh, sometimes what you will do is if uh, directly heat rate will be given so directly you will try to solve the problem without uh, multiplying that fuel cost then the answer might be you uh, will be not satisfying the demand the answer might be goes wrong mm, okay so the deviation you will get instead of 850 megawatt you will get uh, like 820 megawatt 830 megawatt like that also you may get so you have to very very careful about this um, problem so whatever the problem is being given so you have to uh, take it um, correctly okay so next step so what uh, what is the general formulation dfi divided by dpa is equal to lambda so what uh, we have to do first we have to differentiate the fuel cost function one with respect to um, the uh, p1 that is uh, the power generation p1 so um, we are differentiating differentiating you know so this term will becomes one 
and uh, so while differentiating the square is coming now you have to multiply the, uh, this term into 2 so if you multiply 0.00256p1 that is equal to lambda so equate it to lambda so here so that you take it as equation number 1 similarly uh, differentiate the fuel cost function 2 with respect to uh, p2 okay so df2 divided by dp2 that also equals the lambda. So what you need to do is you have to differentiate and equate it to lambda. So take this, this as equation number two. Okay. So you will get answer like this. I hope you you also uh, doing this problem. Next step. Df3 divided by dp3. Df3 divided by dp3 is equal to 7.97 plus 0.00964p3. That equals to lambda. So you take this as equation number three. Okay. So now you got three equation. Now uh, what uh, we need to do? So from equation one, equation number one. So you need to find out p one. Equation number one, we need to find out p one. So uh, so p one, uh, uh, if you take outside now, you need to take this term as this side. So p one is equal to lambda minus six point. 48 divided by 0.00256. And similarly, from the equation number two, what we are doing is we are taking out P2. So similarly, we are taking P2. So P2 is equal to lambda minus 7.85 divided by 0.00388. Similarly, from equation number three. From equation number three, we have to take down, uh, we have to take outside this P3. So P3 is equal to lambda minus 7.97 divided by 0.00964. So you got P1, P2 and P3. Next, what, uh, what is the demand? So you have to go to the problem. So what is the demand is given in the problem? So demand is given like 850 megawatt. So 850 megawatt in the sense P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to 850 megawatt. That is whatever the power generation that is being happening in that particular okay particular um, thing particular uh, dispatch uh, we have to take all the uh, we are taking all this uh, power generation so uh, what we are we are taking is p1 plus p2 plus p3 is equal to 850 megawatt so you take this as equation number four so now what we have to do is you have to substitute substitute p1 p, uh, p2 and p3 in equation number four okay and you need to find out the lambda Okay, so similarly, what we are doing is we are substituting, substituting all the things in equation number four. Okay, so next uh, rest all others are mathematics only. So uh, you, how simply you are solving? Okay, so you, I I hope you are all using your scientific calculator for solving this, taking this lambda term outside, lambda term alone outside, and. Uh, this uh, this term uh, you, you are taking this side okay equal to the uh, right hand side okay so left side you are taking only lambda so after simplifying okay you can easily simplify by using your scientific calculator after uh, simplifying you will get lambda around this uh, lambda is equal to 8.2851 8.2851 after decimal four digits don't round off after decimal try to take four digits. Similarly, what we did is we have taken four digits. After decimal, we have taken four digits. Okay. So now what we need to do is after finding out lambda, we need to substitute, substitute this lambda in equation number one, two, and three. Equation number one, uh, like P1 is equal to lambda minus 6.48 divided by 0 0.00256. So what you need to do is you need to substitute, substitute uh, this um, lambda. So uh, actually I have round, uh, rounded off here. So you don't round off in your um, uh, while solving, okay? I think you're uh, all doing, no? So you don't uh, round off, directly take uh, 8.2851 uh, minus 6.48 divided by 0 0.00256. Okay, after solving, after solving you can easily um, uh, get uh, P1 is equal to 7 point, so, sorry, 705.07 megawatt. 705.07 megawatt. 
Similarly, what you need to do is you need to substitute lambda uh, as lambda in there p2 also. So p2 is nothing but lambda minus 7.85 divided by 0 0.00388 from equation number two. <coughs> Where from equation number two? Yeah, this is the, from the equation number two. So we are substituting and we are founding out the answer. So after that, we, we found out the answer like P2 is equal to 112.1 megawatt. 112.1 megawatt. I, uh, I think sometimes I, I rounded off. You don't round off. Why? Because for getting accurate answer, I think the 11.1 uh, something you will get megawatt. Similarly, P3. P3, we are substituting this uh, 8.25 uh, 2851 in the uh, equation number three. So in the equation number three, uh, so what we are doing is we are substituting, substituting and we are founding out the answer. Okay, so we are fi finding out the answer. So after that, uh, we are getting P3 as uh, like 32.6 megawatt. After founding, uh, finding out all these things, what you need to do is you have to write like this. You have to take all this uh, thing, like P1, P2, and P3, you have to write, comma, that the minimum and maximum operating limits. That also you need to write. Okay, here, I think I missed a megawatt here. You need to ha add a megawatt here, like 150 megawatt less than or equal to P1, less than or equal to 600 megawatt. That is P1. Um, Okay, near to P1, you have to write. Next, P2. P2 is 112.1 megawatt. Comma, 100 megawatt less than or equal to P2, less than or equal to 400 megawatt. Similarly, we found out P3 as 32.6 megawatt, comma, uh, 50 megawatt less than or equal to P3, less than or equal to 200 megawatt. Next, you need to find out which, uh, which are the generating units not satisfying the this minimum and or maximum operating limits okay so if you take this if you take this uh, which are the um, generating unit not satisfying the this um, operating limits like um, i think first generating unit first generating unit not satisfies the operating limits why because um, after finding out the first uh, generating unit Okay, power generated from the first generating unit that is 705.07 megawatt, but uh, it should be within uh, 150 megawatt, uh, 150 megawatt to 600 megawatt. So it is not satisfying. That is, it is violating the maximum operating limits, or it, it is violating the upper operating limits, upper operating limits. Like that also you can say. Similarly, coming to um, the second generating unit, second generating unit, it is satisfying. It is it is within the minimum and maximum operating limits. While go to the third third generating unit, that is 32.6 megawatt. So that also that also not satisfying. Why? Because the limit is 50 megawatt um, to for 200 megawatt. It is violating its minimum operating limit, or it is violating its lower operating limit. Lower operating limit. So you have to um, write uh, write like this, like uh, <coughs> power generation from the first generating unit, second generating unit, and third generating. Power generating from the first generating unit, second generating unit, and third generating unit. Okay, not uh, meet meets the demand. Uh, you have to find out whether it is um, meeting the demand or not. So while adding, I think you are getting approximately four. 849 point something something you are getting so it is um, um, p1 p2 and p3 meets the power total power demand but p1 violates uh, power generating unit one power generating unit one p1 violates its upper operating limits or maximum operating limits and p3 p3 violates its lower operating limit or Ma uh, minimum operating limits. P3 violates its minimum operating limit. Like that, you need to write. So, what wh what shall we do? So, uh, th there is some condition. If uh, if uh, uh, like any any generating units violating its upper operating limits or maximum operating limits, so you have to set that 
you have to set that generating value to its maximum operating limit. Say, for example, um, P1 violates its maximum operating limit. So what we are doing is we are uh, we are making the P1 P1 the, we are um, setting setting the P1 as its maximum operating limits. Here, what is the maximum operating limits? It is 600 megawatt. So um, set the P1 to its upper operating limits. And uh, if uh, and uh, there is another one condition also. If uh, P3, if um, like any any generating units violating its lower operating limits, lower operating limits, you have to set that value to its lower um, lower uh, operating limits. You have to set. So what is the lower operating limits uh, that is uh, given in the problem? That is given in the um, P3 because P3 violates its lower operating limits. No, so it is violating its lower operating. Limits. So you have to set the P3 as lower operating limits, that is minimum operating limit. So this is 50 megawatt. So you have to set the P3 as lower operating limit. So that is P3 is 50 megawatt. So now we set that is P1 is equal to 600 megawatt and P3 is equal to 50 megawatt. Okay. So we very well know like uh, P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to 850 megawatt. Okay, if P1 is equal to 600 megawatt, then under P3 is equal to 50 megawatt, then uh, what is P2? So what is P2? We have to find out from this equation. That is equation number four. What is equation number four? Equation number four is P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to 850 megawatt. So what we need to do is we need to substitute. We need to substitute P1 is equal to six, 600 megawatt and P3 is equal to 50 megawatt in this equation, equation number four. And we need to found out P2. What is P2? So you need to substitute. So if it, if a P1 uh, 600 megawatt, if P1 is 600 megawatt and P3 50 megawatt, we need to found out this uh, P2. So what is P2? You need to substitute and see. So what I did is I, I have substituted and I have added like uh, 600 plus 50. So it is coming like 650 megawatt plus P2 is equal to 850 megawatt. So from that easily you can found out P2. That is 200 megawatt. That is 850 minus 650. That is 200 megawatt. Okay. So now, now um, we, uh, we found out P2. P2 is equal to 200 megawatt. So you, we already derived this three uh, conditions. We, uh, we already derived this three condition from economic load dispatch of N thermal generating units. We already um, okay concluded. Uh, we already concluded and derived this conditions. That is DFI divided by D, uh, DPA is equal to lambda for PA minimum less than or equal to PA less than or equal to PA maximum. If DFI divided by DPA is less than or equal to lambda for PA is equal to PA maximum. If DFI divided by DPA is greater than or equal to lambda for PA is equal to PA maximum. So these are the three condition we already derived. We already derived. Okay. So uh, here, say here you uh, you have to uh, concentrate. So we only set. Okay. We only set that. Uh, P1 and P3 to its minimum and maximum operating limits. Now we can't able to conclude uh, conclude that this answer is correct or not. We can't able to conclude. You should not conclude this uh, problem like this answer is correct because we are just uh, consider. We are just consider or we are, we just uh, let or we just set set the value to its minimum and maximum operating limits. We can't know like this answer is correct or not. Uh, like a, a considered answer is correct or not. Okay, you should not come to the conclusion uh, just like that. Okay, you need to verify and come to the conclusion. So for that, uh, this three condition we already derived. So this three condition we have already seen. Now what I'm doing is I'm starting with the uh, unit two, incremental cost of unit two. That is DF2 divided by DP2. Why? Because that only um, from that uh, from uh, P, P1 and P3, 
we we just considered we just considered and we start um, from the two um, p p1 and uh, p3 we found out p2 so i am starting with the incremental cost of unit 2 that is df2 divided by dp2 by taking p2 as 200 megawatt because we already found out p2 as 200 megawatt so what i am doing is by taking p2 as 200 megawatt i am i am finding out again um, the lambda over here because the condition that is dfi divided by dp dp2 is equal to lambda so what i am doing is is equal to lambda that that condition we already derived we, that condition we already derived okay this condition also satisfied that is p minimum p maximum okay if you go to the problem like what is the p minimum p maximum that is 100 to 400 so that is 200 we already found out this condition satisfied but i need a uh, but satisfied but the, this is the just the consideration i just considered um, uh, like uh, p2 as 200 megawatt how i uh, consider by uh, by um, by uh, letting uh, p and uh, p1 and p, p3 so we just found out but it is satisfying but even though i'm checking whether it is um, correct or not so uh, what i'm uh, i'm doing is i'm, I'm calculating the lambda so this already you calculated that is df2 divided by dp2 from the equation number two from the equation number two that is equation number two yeah here uh, the, the here uh, the uh, equation number two so yeah here the equation number two that is 7.85 plus 0 0.00388 p2 that is equal to lambda that is equation number two so this already we um, um calculated like uh, found out okay so this uh, from this uh, just uh, you, you i am substituting over here i am substituting over here that is uh, yeah i am substituting over here that is uh, 7.85 uh, plus 0 0.00388 p2 that is equal to lambda now i i am substituting p2 as 200 megawatt i am and i am finding out the lambda so what uh, <coughs> I'm just uh, substituting uh, P2 as 200 megawatt. Okay, so how it will come uh, while substituting P2 as 200 megawatt, you need to simplify. So by simplifying, you, you are getting, we are getting the answer as 8.626, 8.626. Okay, we are getting the answer like this. So now this is the Lambda, this Lambda we found out. Okay, again, Again, what I'm doing is I'm again, I'm uh, calculating. I'm uh, now this is the lambda. Now I'm, uh, I'm let, I, I, I let it know. I, I just set that value P, P1 as 600 megawatt. No? Again, I am verifying whether that uh, P1 value that is 600 megawatt is correct or not. Okay, whatever I consider that is correct or not. I'm verifying, I'm rechecking re again. Okay, so next df1 divided by dp1 by while taking p1 as 600 megawatt and equating it to lambda. Okay, from equation one, I am taking this. From equation one, I am taking this. That is 6.48 plus 0 0.00256, 0 0.00256 p1. That equals the lambda. So what I am doing is I am substituting 600, 600 megawatt in equation number two. I'm substituting 600 megawatt in equation number one. Okay, after uh, substituting, I am getting the lambda value as okay. This value that is the df uh, one divided by dpoe one. That value as 8.016. Okay, df one divided by dp one uh, is equal to 8.016. I found out. Okay, so but what is the condition? What is the condition? We need to check the condition. We need to check the condition. Where is the condition? If what I, what I did, what I did, I set that P1 as 2 is maximum operating limits. P1 to its maximum operating limits. If, if I set P1 to its maximum operating limits, this condition should, should be satisfied. This condition should be satisfied. That is DFI divided by DPA is less than or equal to lambda. Then PA is equal to PA maximum. In that scenario, I have taken P1 
P i that is P one as six hundred. That is to its maximum operating limits. That is that as six hundred megawatt. Okay, so maximum operating limit is six hundred megawatt. So now I need to um, verify this condition. That is DFI divided by DPA is less than or equal to lambda or not. Okay, again, um, so uh, we found out now. So DF one divided by DP one is equal to eight point zero one six. So eight point zero one six is not less than or equal to lambda. What we found out that is eight point six two six. So not less than, not less than or equal to eight point six two six. Okay, not less than or equal to. Sorry, it is less than or equal to. It is less than or equal. To. Okay, because <coughs> this value is less. This value is less. So this condition satisfied. This condition is satisfied. So P one is equal to six hundred megawatt. See P one is equal to six hundred megawatt. Now only. We we are um, now only this answer is correct. Now only after checking this condition only we are coming to the conclusion like P one is equal to six hundred megawatt. Now previously also we we set P one is equal to six hundred megawatt. Now um, after verifying the condition now we are coming to the conclusion like P one is equal to six hundred megawatt. Okay. Again what I am doing is again I am going to Third, third incremental fuel cost. That is DF three divided by DP three. DF three uh, divided by DP three by taking P three as fifty megawatt. By taking P three as fifty megawatt and equating it to lambda. So from equation three, go to equation number three. From equation number three, I am taking this equation. That is seven point nine seven plus zero point zero zero nine six four P three. That equals the lambda. What I am doing is I am substituting this P3 as 50 megawatt here. Okay, I am uh, and I am I am I am going to find out this DF3 divided by the DP3. Okay, so after further simplification, further simplification, we are going to find out uh, like uh, we are going to finding out this lambda uh, that is DF3 divided by DP3. So what is the DF3 divided by DP3 value? That is 8.452. 8.452. Okay. So DF3 divided by DP3 value is 8.453. So what is the condition? So again, we need to check this condition. What is the condition? If uh, PA is equal to PA minimum. So what we did uh, for third generating unit? We set to the PA is equal to PA minimum. That is 50 50 megawatt. 50 megawatt. If this condition we are making, you have to satisfy with this condition. That is, DFI divided by DPI is greater than or equal to lambda. If DFI divided by DPI is greater than or equal to lambda, then this condition is correct. For PA is equal to PA minimum. Okay. So what we found out that is uh, answer. What we found out here, so you need to write uh, this uh, condition over here. That is DFI divided by DPI is greater than or equal to lambda for PA is equal to PA minimum. Then what we found out, what we found out, that is 8.452. That is DF3 divided by D3 is is equal to 8.452 is not greater than, not greater than or equal to 8.626 because It is less than or less than, okay? Because this condition not satisfied now. This condition not satisfied now. That is DF uh, DF three divided by DP three is uh, is greater than or equal to lambda. It should be there, but it is not greater than or equal to the uh, lambda. It is not satisfied, okay? So if it is not satisfying, means P three cannot be its minimum operating limits. Why? Because that condition not satisfied. It is not greater than or equal to that particular lambda value. What we found out, so P three cannot be its minimum operating limit. Okay, P three cannot be its minimum operating limit. So now we uh, came into the conclusion. So P three cannot be its minimum op operating limits. Whereas P three P one condition satisfied. P one condition satisfied. So 
P1, uh, uh, P1, P1, so if you see here, yeah, P1 condition, this condition, that is DFI divided by DPI is less than or equal to lambda, then P is equal to PA maximum. That condition satisfied. So already we have taken P1 as 600 megawatt. So this condition satisfied. Okay, this condition satisfied. So what I am doing is by taking P1 as 600 megawatt, Okay, this condition only satisfied. Okay, verified, verified or concluded. P1 is equal to 600 megawatt. By taking P1 is equal to 600 megawatt, we need to find out P2 and P3. How to find out? We already know. We are from equation four. Okay, P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to 850 megawatt. If P1 is equal to 600 megawatt, then what P2 and P3 will come? P2 and P3 will be like uh, 250 megawatt, that is uh, 850 uh, minus 600 megawatt, that is 250 megawatt. So P2 plus P3 is equal to 250 megawatt. P2 plus P3 is equal to 250 megawatt. So uh, again, you need to go to equation number two. Equation number two, we already calculated P2. That is lambda minus 7.85. You need to substitute, substitute in this equation. That is P2 and P3. Okay, from uh, equation number two, lambda minus 7.85 divided by 0 0.00388 from um, P3, uh, sorry, from uh, um, equation number three, from equation number three, you need to substitute lambda minus 7.97 divided by 0 0.00964. That equals the, uh, this uh, 250 mega. Okay, now again, you need to buy for further simplifying. Again, uh, we need to find out the lambda. After simplifying this, after taking this lambda term outside this term, uh, like um, right hand side, uh, equal to right hand side, uh, I'm taking further simplifying. I'm getting lambda as 8.57, like that. 8.57, like that. So now um, I got the lambda as 8.57. I need to substitute this lambda value in uh, P2 and P3. Uh, that is uh, that uh, equation two and three uh, for finding out uh, P2 and P3. Okay, so now uh, what I'm doing is I'm substituting lambda is equal to 8.57 in equation number two, that is P2. So P2 is equal to 8.57 minus, uh, that is lambda minus 7.85 divided by 0 0.00388. So I'm substituting lambda as, uh, as 8.57. So after that, uh, simplifying, you will get uh, P2 as um, uh, like uh, further calculating by using your scientific calculator, you will get P2 as uh, 187 megawatt, 187 megawatt, okay, 187 megawatt. Now you need to check whether the whether it is um, from the minimum, uh, whether it is falling at a minimum and maximum operating limits or not. I think minimum and maximum operating limits is 100 megawatt to 400 megawatt. Now it is satisfied. Now it is within this minimum and maximum operating limit. Similarly, you need to substitute lambda is equal to 8.57 in equation number 3. That is for finding out P3. So after uh, substituting from the equation number P3, so um, after that you, you need to calculate. We need to calculate this P3. So after calculating, we'll get answer like P3 is equal to 62.24 megawatt. Okay, for the simple calculating, uh, we will get um, 62.24 megawatt. So now what is the minimum and maximum operating limits? That uh, should, it should be fall under 50 to 200 megawatt, 50 megawatt to 200 megawatt. Now it is satisfied. Now this answer is also satisfied. It is falling under uh, this, uh, this uh, 50 to 200 megawatt. Now what I need to do is, I need to take all the uh, values, that is P1, P2, and P3, and I need to write within, uh, and also come up, that minimum and maximum operating limits also, I need to write, whether P, P1 also satisfying or not. P1 already uh, 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 we calculated, that is 600 megawatt, that is satisfying. Okay, 600 megawatt, that is satisfying. So you need to write all this condition, P1, P2, and P3, and minimum and maximum operating, condition also, um, okay, and you need to conclude, conclude the answer. 
uh, like uh, P1, P2 and P3 meets the demand, meets the power demand and also it, it meters the, um, that is power generating unit uh, from, uh, power generation from generating unit 1, 2 and 3 meets the power demand and also it, sat, it, it, it is uh, within the minimum and maximum operating limits. Like that you need to conclude. Okay, simply like that, don't stop up to here. If uh, uh, like if you are solving similar kind of problem in uh, your uh, examination or uh, in the problem in, in, in your uh, rough work, so don't stop up to here. If you stop up to here, only out of 10 marks, only eight marks will be awarded. Okay, so you need to take all the answers out and you need to write uh, what are the minimum and maximum operating limits. And finally, you need to conclude. Conclusion also carries one mark. Conclusion also carries one mark. And also, like units, very, very important. Megawatt. I missed the units here, but uh, you uh, don't repeat uh, this in your note. Okay, notebook. Okay, so here you need to write 100 megawatt less than or equal to P2 less than or equal to 400 megawatt. Unit is very, very important. So, um, with that only, you will get full marks in the 